All right, guys, let's make the anemone granny square pocket chart. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make my anemone granny square pocket shawl. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell, that way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're not gonna to wanna to miss out. This anemone granny square pocket shawl was created using the anemone granny square that I made a tutorial on a little while back. If you would like to refer to that tutorial to make these exact granny squares, definitely do so. In this tutorial, I am only going to show you how to crochet these granny squares together, make the border, and make the pocket and attach the pocket to the granny square pocket shawl itself. If you do have another granny square that you favor, that is your favorite to make, you can absolutely substitute that granny square in for the anemone granny square. These granny squares are seven inches wide by seven inches tall, just so you can keep dimension with me. I am gonna include the pattern for free in the note section, description section, and comment section below. That way, all you have to do is click on the link, print off the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. Once you've printed off the pattern, let's go ahead and dive right into what materials you're going to need to make this anemone granny square pocket shawl. This video is actually sponsored by Kidding Around. Kidding Around is an activity-based YouTube channel for elementary school kids that touches on all different subjects and interests. It's actually really cool. I am good friends with Melanie, the creator of KiddingAround.club. She is an incredible woman. I met her at my kids' elementary school. She was on the PTA. She had brilliant ideas. She was just the most amazing person when it came to coming up with cool things for kids to do. And now she has a YouTube channel where she controls all of these incredible lessons that are fun and engaging and hands-on. And literally, this woman is Wonder Woman. And she's incredibly creative and crafty and has brilliant, brilliant ideas. Now her YouTube channels comes up with certain topics such as the art, science, culture, kindness, influential women, and so much more. It's an amazing YouTube channel. You've got to check it out. I've already subscribed. You should too. Also check out her Facebook and Instagram. Like those, follow those, get more tidbit ideas and enjoy. Thank you so much for sponsoring us, Melanie. And kidding around, let's get back to my video. The materials that you're going to need to make your anemone granny square pocket shawl will include 29 already created anemone granny squares. If you would like, you can go refer to my video on the anemone granny square, how to create it, make 29 of those, then come back to this video where I'm gonna show you how to crochet them all together, make the border and the pocket for the pocket shawl. For just the materials in this video, you will need 624 yards of yarn, 572 meters of yarn, 350 grams of yarn, or 12.3 ounces of yarn. If you're starting from scratch and need the materials for the granny squares also, grand total amount of yarn you will need for all the granny squares, the border, crocheting them all together, and the pocket, you'll need a grand total of 2,754 yards of yarn. 2,522 meters of yarn, 1,544 grams of yarn, or 54.3 ounces of yarn. Now when I'm talking about yarn, I mean a size four weight, medium worsted, Aran size yarn, okay? So nothing crazy, just a size four, all right? You will also need a crochet hook size I9 or 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, tapestry needle, and optional is the stitch markers, row markers, a paper clip, safety pin, or just a piece of yarn to help you when we get to the border part, just keeping those edges in check. All right, go ahead and gather all of your materials, print off your pattern, and let's get started making your anemone granny square pocket shell. To begin, I want you to take two of your granny square sections and set them off to the side. We're going to use these two for the pockets of our pocket shawl. I want you to look at your stack and grab two more granny squares. What we're going to do next is actually sew them or crochet them together. We're going to join the two granny squares together. I'm going to use the method where I will flip stitch crochet the back loops only of both edge single crochets all the way up. 
If you know exactly what I'm talking about, then you can go ahead and dive right in. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, that is okay. I'm going to show you right now. So grabbing the color of yarn that you want to use to sew or crochet your two granny squares together. I'm going to begin with a long enough tail so I can weave in my end at the end of the project. Create my slip knot, attach my crochet hook, and I am ready to begin. So for this particular anemone granny square, in the very corners, we made the corners two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet. So I want you to find that, sing uh, that chain one that was in the middle of the two single crochets. Find that stitch and then see the V stitch right there. I'm going to insert my crochet hook into the back loop of that V stitch. Then I'm gonna come over to this anemone granny square. They're made the exact same way. So in the corner, I'm going to look for that chain one stitch. Find the V stitch right here. And then I'm going to insert in the back loop only of that V stitch. So for this side, I went top to bottom. And then on this side, I went bottom to top. That way, I'm gonna put my yarn, so if I separate these two, I'm gonna put my yarn like right in the middle of these two granny squares. When I push them together, I'm going to take the yarn, yarn over, pull through the first single crochet, pull through the second single crochet, and slip stitch through the loop that's on my crochet hook, leaving me with just one loop on my crochet hook, and that was a slip stitch. I basically just slip stitched these two granny squares together. The so next we find the very next stitch. So I look at the granny square, here's the next stitch, go in the back loop only, come over here, find the next stitch, go in the back loop only from underneath and pop out the top, grab my yarn, gonna yarn over, pull through one, pull through two, and pull through the loop that's on my crochet hook, leaving me with just one loop on my crochet hook. And you continue this process all the way up like a zipper, so it's like zip, 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 and just attaching all the way up. You will stop at the very corner, so this corner right here also has two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets. You will search for that chain one stitch. You will make your very last slip stitch in that chain one stitch, and then we will close. So. I'm going to continue and I'll meet you at this step just to show you what to do next. But again, find your next stitch, <clears throat> insert your crochet hook into the back loop only, come to this side, find the next stitch, insert your crochet hook, back loop only, grab your working yarn, yarn over however you can to get that yarn to hook into your crochet hook and pull that yarn through all the way, leaving yourself with just one loop on your crochet hook. Keep going and I'll meet you at the end here to show you what to do next. Great, okay, once you have reached the very end, this is what you're looking at. It's a little difficult to see with this solid charcoal gray color, but it creates a really beautiful seam right in the middle of the work. Okay, once you've reached the very top, those two chain one spaces in the corners, grab two more granny squares, yes. Okay, so same thing. We're gonna dive right into the exact same location that we did for the first two granny squares. We find the chain one corner of this corner. We find the chain one corner of this corner. Okay, push them together, yarn over, 
and pull that yarn through all three spots through this single crochet, through this single crochet, and the chain one loop on your crochet hook, leaving you with just one chain on your crochet hook, and you don't even skip a beat. You just keep going. Dive right in, find your next stitch, go in the back loop only, other side, go in the back loop only, yarn over, pull through all. Next stitch, back loop only, Next stitch, back loop only, yarn over, pull through all the way. Great. This is the way it's going to look vaguely, just temporarily, because we will be sewing this or crocheting this side together as well. But for now, continue up, and I will meet you right here. Again, finding that chain one stitch, finding that chain one stitch, and I will meet you right here to show you what we do next. You're doing great. Keep up the fantastic work. Okay, last stitch space here. Perfect, okay. Grab two more granny squares. Now for this granny square shawl, it is three granny squares deep, I guess you could say. It's nine granny squares wide, but it's three granny squares deep. So after this is when we stop. Diving right into the next, the last two granny squares for this extent, the exact same way we dove into the last two. Finding the chain one stitch in the corner Finding the chain one stitch in the corner. Great. Bunch them together. Yarn over. Pull through all the way to attach. And continue on. Next stitch. Back loop only. Back loop only. Yarn over. Pull all the way through, leaving one chain on your crochet hook. Okay, and then this is how it will look. And if I move that, show you all the way there there that's okay that's great so continue this process slip stitch crocheting these all the way to the top chain one stitch I will meet you here to show you what we do next okay last stitch here that chain one Pull through. Great. Okay, once you've reached all the way to the top, take your scissors, cut yourself a long enough tail so that way you can weave in your ends to clean up the project and pull that through for a slip knot. Great. Okay, so we have just finished three granny squares tall. We will not need to make any more granny squares going in this direction. You can continue making or adding on to this three granny squares and then over three granny squares and just keep building, building, building until you've reached nine granny squares wide. What I did want to dive into is if we turn the shawl this way or these granny squares this direction, I want to show you how you will sew or crochet these granny squares going this direction now. Wondering what you do with that intersection that's already created, okay? So let's go ahead and do this part, and then I feel confident enough to let you go and completely attach all your other granny squares together to form the main inner body of the shawl before we move on to the next step. Grabbing your yarn, your working yarn, long enough tail, so that way you can weave in your ends, creating your slip knot, Attaching your crochet hook. Again, finding those chain one stitches. Perfect, just like we did before. Then yarn over however you can to get that yarn to go under your claw and pull through one side, the other side, and the loop on your crochet hook, leaving you with just one loop on your crochet hook. And repeat as we did 
above here. I will meet you at this intersection to show you how we get around that intersection and continue on to the next two granny squares. Okay, we are coming upon that middle join. Got one more stitch here before that, that middle join. Um, yarn over, pull through. Okay, so I have now reached that middle join section right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my crochet hook, go underneath that join that was created going this direction. I'm going to yarn over, pull through or underneath that section. There we go, I got twisted. Okay, so now I have two loops on my crochet hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through both loops and that creates a single crochet kind of keeping those V stitches going as I pass over this middle section and then I continue on finding the next V stitch, next V stitch, yarn over, pull through and just I keep going. Finding the next back loop only back loop only just like we would and then when you look at your stitches this V shape line that we have created is consistent it keeps going even as we pass over this middle section and you will just create this very clean V stitch line that will continue on through the extent of your shawl okay that is it guys that is how you will sew or crochet your granny squares together for the middle section of this pocket shawl. And I will meet you when you have completed all of your granny squares, when you've attached all of your granny squares together. Remember to leave two granny squares out for the pockets, okay? So make sure to keep two out and so all of your other granny squares together, weave in your ends, and then I will show you what we do next. This is looking so great. You are doing a fantastic job. All right, perfect. Once you have slip stitch crocheted all of your granny squares together, we are now ready to make the border around your shawl. This is super easy. Go ahead and take your crochet hook that you've been using the entire time. Take your yarn. Give yourself a long enough tail so you can weave in your ends at the end of the project. Make your slip knot. Attach your crochet hook. Perfect. Okay, so in this corner, so really you can begin in any corner. It doesn't matter. I'm going to begin in this corner right here. For this anemone granny square, I know that the corners have two single crochet, chain one, two single crochet. So I look for that chain one stitch, insert my crochet hook in that chain one stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull all the way through for a slip stitch. The slip stitch will help you attach your new yarn to your project. Chain one. And now I'm gonna have you slip stitch in that exact same space, same stitch that you just slip stitched in to attach your yarn. So slip stitch, next stitch, slip stitch, next stitch, slip stitch. I'm going to have you make one slip stitch in each stitch all the way across the top of this shawl. So go ahead and continue on. Let's make it to the very first connection of the two granny squares so I can show you how I hop over that connection. So in each stitch, making one slip stitch. Great, coming upon that connection. Okay, so when we look here, I'm going to completely hop over these connected pieces to the next free stitch that doesn't have any stitches in it. 
and slip stitch into that stitch and that will create a nice clean connection between the two granny squares where it will close up any hole, any gap there that might have occurred at the very end of this connective line. And then you just continue making one slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. I will meet you at the other corner, the next corner, to show you how we do the corners. All right, coming on that corner. So one, two, single crochets. There we go. Okay, I've reached that chain one stitch. So in that chain one stitch of my corner, I'm going to slip stitch, chain one, and slip stitch again. And that will help me move on to this side of the shawl. So I just rotate the shawl and I keep going. So the next stitch is slip stitch in that. Next stitch, slip stitch in that. Continue to slip stitch in every stitch all the way across. And I will meet you at this next corner just to go around that corner with you. And then I think that you will be secure enough to know how to do your corners. All right, coming upon our next corner here. Perfect. Here is our chain one. Slip stitch into that chain one corner stitch. Chain one and slip stitch again into that chain one corner stitch just to help us to get to this other side of the shawl. Rotate the shawl so we are now working along this side. And now I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you continue to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across, remembering how we hop over these join sections. Remember that the corners will always be a slip stitch, chain one slip stitch in the same little chain one quarter corner stitch. I will meet you in the exact same spot that we began this row one of our border to show you how we can close row one and move on to row two. Great, I'm coming upon the end of round one. Perfect. Okay, here's the last stitch. Corner stitch here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch in that last corner stitch, chain one, and then I'm going to dive right into the very first stitch going down, the very first stitch that I made for round one. This is how we're going to begin round two and how you will move forward in beginning each and every round for your border. So after you chain one, find the very first stitch we're going to slip stitch in the back loop only. So find the back loop and slip stitch. Next stitch, back loop, slip stitch. You're going to continue this whole section, this whole side of the pocket shawl where we are just going to be making one slip stitch in the back loop only of each stitch all the way down. So go ahead and continue doing this and I'll meet you at the next corner to show you what we will do with that corner. Okay, coming upon that first corner here, I'm going to look for that chain one stitch, which is right here. So I got one more stitch before I reach it. Once you get to the chain one stitch, you're going to slip stitch underneath both loops, so a full slip stitch, chain one, full slip stitch in the same exact space, and that will give you this nice corner point. And then we rotate, rotate the shawl, so we can continue working along this side of the shawl. You will repeat that corner where you just Find the chain one space. In that chain one space, you're going to do a full slip stitch, chain one slip stitch, and then continue on. Finding the next stitch and slip stitching in the back loop 
only. I am confident that you can continue to go around this entire shawl following this pattern of just slip stitching in the back loop only of every stitch. And then in each corner, finding the chain one space and making a full slip stitch, chain one, full slip stitch in that chain one space and continue on. I will meet back up with you when we are about to close this round two and start round three. All right, guys, we are now finishing round two up. You will be able to see the tail that we started with to weave in our ends. Having this tail kept out is actually going to be a great marker to help us identify when the row is about to begin or end. I am going to slip stitch back loop only in each stitch all the way up to that chain one stitch. In that chain one stitch, I am going to slip stitch underneath both loops, chain one, and then I'm going to dive right into my next row. By doing this, it's going to create a very seamless look where you will, are not going to be able to identify which corner is where you began. So once you chain one, find the very next stitch and slip stitch in the back loop only. I'm gonna rotate the shawl so I can get a better visual, work better. And you just continue on without skipping a beat, making one slip stitch in the back loop only of each, of each stitch all the way around. To count your rows, what you will start to see in your work are these lines. These lines are the front loops that were left behind when we were working the back loop only of our stitches. So if you look at the lines, you're able to identify the rows. So this very first line is my row one. The next line here is round two. This is round three, which if I worked more on, it would just be a line. And that's how you're able to count your rounds, just by looking at those lines and each line is a round. Okay, so I am going to continue working my border for 24 rounds, a total of 24 rounds. I want to have a really thick border around my shawl. You can deviate. You can make this however you, you want it to look. If you want your border to be really thin, then stop wherever you want to stop. If you want to really make your border wider than I'm going to make mine, then keep going. You now know how to I, how to work your corners. You now know how to continue making a new row, ending a row and beginning a new row. And you know how to count how many rounds that you have. When you are ready to finish your, your shawl, when you're ready to finish your border, let me back this up because this is my marker indicating the beginning and ending of my round. Okay, so finding that chain one stitch or space, working up to it. Perfect, okay, so when you find your chain one space, going to slip stitch, chain one, and then go to the next stitch over underneath both loops, make a full slip stitch to close. Grab your scissors, cutting a long enough tail so you can weave in your end. Yarn over, pull the yarn through the loop, pull tight for a slip knot, and your work is done. What I do personal preference is I'll take my crochet hook through the back of that same stitch I just made a slip stitch in, grab that tail and pull it to the back of the work, which just creates, I'm not pulling it tight because I'm going to keep working on my border, but I will pull it through and this creates a very clean seam on your edge of your border. And then I on the back, I will just weave in my ends through the work with my yarn needle, okay? So go ahead and continue working your border as many rows as you, or as many rounds as you would like to make your border as thick as you want. 
finish your work as soon as you're done with your border we will move on to making the pocket part of our pocket shawl see you very soon perfect okay once you have finished your border the thickness of your border you will just tie off the way i showed you close it up this is what 24 rows look like i wanted my border to be nice and thick for this particular shawl and now we move on to the pocket section so moving the shawl aside and bringing out one of our granny squares there we go we're going to now do the exact same type of border that we did for the body of the shawl but around this one granny square so we're going to take our yarn the same yarn that we were using take our crochet hook starting with a long tail create our slip knot attach our crochet hook and we're ready to go finding one of the corners it doesn't matter which corner you begin with we know that the corners have a two single crochet chain one two single crochet finding that chain one spot or stitch inserting our crochet hook yarn over pull through and pull all the way through for a slip stitch and that attaches the yarn to the actual project we will chain one i'm going to slip stitch in that first stitch that i just slip stitched into to attach my yarn and i'm ready to begin my round one of the border part to this pocket granny square okay we're going to work this pattern exactly the same way we did as the shawl where you just make one slip stitch in each stitch all the way around with row one we are going underneath both loops of every stitch all the way across just to give us a really firm foundation for that border when we get to the corners we just find that chain one stitch and we will slip stitch chain one slip stitch and then work our way down this side so because this is the exact same pattern that we did for the body of the shawl i'm going to go ahead and let you continue on and i will meet you back here to close off round one begin round two and then i will show you how many rows we will make for the pocket section of the pocket shawl all right keep going you are doing a fantastic job we are almost done guys all right coming upon the very end of round one making my way all the way up to that chain one section it's the last stitch all right here's the chain one i'm going to slip stitch in the chain one section chain one and then move right on to round two of our border for round two of our border i'm going to find the very first stitch that i made for round one and i'm going to slip stitch in the back loop only of that first stitch and that just jump starts me right into working round two and for round two we begin the slip stitching of the back loop only of every stitch all the way around what I noticed is I did find it very handy to use my stitch markers in the border part of my the main body of my shawl because it can be a little tricky to find the chain one stitch. So if you were to put a stitch marker or a paper clip or a safety pin or even a piece of yarn in these corner section chain one sections, then it makes it a whole lot easier for you to just go and you will just make your stitches all the way to that chain one stitch and then create your corner stitch of slip stitch chain one slip stitch to get to the other side i found it helpful but it is absolutely not required do what works best for you okay again counting our rows is just the, that line for the pocket part of the pocket shawl i only went six rounds okay you can again deviate this and make as many rounds for your border as you would like making the border as thick as you want or as thin as you want i went six rounds 
Go ahead and continue on with this border for this granny square pocket section and I'll meet you at the end of round six and we will attach the pocket to the pocket shawl. Okay, we are finishing up round six. Perfect. So slip stitch, chain one, and then I will find the very first stitch and underneath both loops, yarn over, pull through slip stitch in that very first stitch under both loops, scissors, yarn over, pull through, and pull tight for that slip knot. I'm gonna go in from the back of that same stitch, yarn over the tail, and pull the tail to the back of the work where I will weave in all of my ends. Great, okay. When you have finished weaving in your ends, we will move on to attaching the pocket to the pocket shawl. Perfect, once you have both pockets all ready to go, the your ends are all woven into your project. We are now ready to attach these to our actual project. So I'm gonna take one, set it aside using this pocket. I'm going to attach my pocket in the very center or over the very center of my granny squares. I'm also going to align my border with the border of the actual shawl to give it a uniformity. To keep this pocket in place, I do recommend that you use some kind of marker or some kind of way of keeping this granny square in place. That way it does not shift on you. Perfect. Great. Now we are going to grab our yarn needle Grab the same color yarn that we have been using for this entire project. I'm going to cut off a, a long enough string to attach this pocket to the actual shawl itself. Thread my needle. Perfect. I'm actually going to begin from the bottom part of the shawl. So I'm gonna bring my needle to the back of the shawl and pop it forward. Just like that, pull the yarn through, take my yarn needle and I'm going to work between the last two rows here, between round six and between round five in the space right between those two rounds. That's where I'm going to insert my yarn needle as I'm making my stitches. That should hide your stitches and make everything invisible as we go along. We are only going to sew three sides, this side right here, the bottom and up the side, leaving this part open. Go ahead and continue to sew the pocket to your shawl. And I will meet you right here at the end to show you how we close and to just finish up the project. Great, once you've reached the very end of your pocket where you've sewn up all three sides, double check all the way around to make sure you don't have any significant gaps that you want to go back and address before you completely say your pocket is done. So check all the way around, making sure every little bit is secure. And when you feel like yours is good, go ahead and take your yarn needle, insert your yarn needle into the side so it's between the inside of the pocket. I'm going to take a stitch. So here's the very corner join. I'm going to insert my yarn needle into a stitch right here pull that through, but keep back just a little bit. I'm going to twist this so it forms a little X shape right here. I'm gonna take my yarn needle. I'm going to go below all, pull through, and pull tight. 
And I'm gonna do this again to form an extra tight knot. All right. And this time I'm actually going to go around and below and slowly feed that knot through so that it will go where I want it to go. And I've secured my yarn, taking my yarn needle, just kind of weaving that back through some of the stitches here to weave in that end. I like to go in between the thread and not just weave in and out, in and out. I go in between the fibers. Grab my scissors. Cut my yarn and now the pocket is done and I'm ready to move on to pocket number two on the other side of the shawl. I'm gonna let you do that on your own. Some things that you might notice with your pocket shawl is one that the sides are going to want to curl a little bit and that is completely natural because these stitches are tighter, they're fresh, the yarn just needs to relax. The stitches need to relax. <clears throat> There's a couple different ways that you can help that and you can either block your shawl and by blocking your shawl, you're gonna make your stitches lay the way you want them to lay or just with time, your stitches will naturally relax. When you look at the inside of the shawl, you will notice that it's bunched. It's bunched because the slip stitch stitches on the border are tighter than the single crochet stitches that were within the granny square itself, creating this bunching. I wanted the bunching, that way when I put the shawl on, it cocoons me, it wraps around me, and creates more of a comfortable feel. If you want your pocket shawl to lay completely flat, you can choose to just do a regular single crochet border on the outside. I do have a tutorial for that of just a regular single crochet blanket border, and that will look really beautiful as well, and it will relax around the granny squares a little more so that way this will lay flatter for you if that's what you desire. There you go. This is the Anemone Granny Square Pocket Shawl. All right guys, so what do you think? I hope you love this Anemone Granny Square Pocket Shawl. If you do, you might also really enjoy my other shawl tutorials right here. Also check out this video which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for spending time with me today, crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.